guest is the co-president of the Emily Post Institute. She's the author of Higher Etiquette, A Guide to the World of Cannabis from Dispensaries to Dinner Parties, and she's the co-host of the Awesome Etiquette Podcast. Please welcome our friend, Lizzie Post. Hi. Hi, Lizzie. Thanks for oh, being here. Here. Thank you so much. I really we, appreciate it. I love this show. You guys we, are so much fun. <laughs> oh man, thank you. That's that's a huge compliment from an etiquette expert because <laughs> you know, who knows what this show is. So if we are achieving proper etiquette when it comes to hosting and weed, then I feel pretty excited. Um, so it's Relationship Week at Wowie, okay. and so I want to start with uh, talking to you about relationship with yourself. So okay. um, I think, okay, so for me, uh, and for I think a lot of people, I think it's kind of interesting to figure out your relationship with weed, uh, mm -hmm. and I wonder if you have any advice for people on how to do that. So for example, for myself, and David mm -hmm. and I were talking about this actually before we started filming, like. I've gone through periods where like I smoked every day and then I've gone through periods where I haven't smoked at all. And right now I'm sort of in this place where like, I really like taking a few days off and then reconnecting with weed and then it kind of makes it a treat again. And then I go back to it. And so it's kind of this dance that I have with it, right? Where like I'm figuring out my relationship with it. And I guess any advice for anyone who's kind of figuring out their relationship with it. I think exactly what you're doing is perfect, which is paying attention to your usage, your consumption, and being able to verbalize that, being able to actually communicate that to someone else so that when someone does offer you something on one of your non-smoking days, you can be like, oh, I'm actually holding off till Friday. Or when you're scheduling with a friend, you can be like, actually, we should wait to get together till Friday because that's when I can smoke with you. And just knowing yourself, what works for you and being confident communicating it, I think is the best way to go when it comes to sort of figuring out your relationship with weed. But it's the paying attention, I think, that is like the key point there. Because like you, I've gone through times where I'm smoking every day. I'm only smoking THC. I'm only smoking CBD. I'm smoking half and half. So I'm not smoking at all, but trying to do the edible thing and realizing I'm not very good at that. Like it's, there's so <laughs> many different, I think, phases you can go through with it that, especially if it's not your like prescribed medication, you know what I mean? If you've got that leeway to play around, um, that both pay, paying attention is the absolute 100% best place to start. Nice. I love that. Also, just for the record, if you guys are gonna pick the day of the week, that you smoke weed with your friends. It should always be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Nobody's like, oh yeah, I'll come over and get high as shit with you on Tuesday. It's just, <laughs> it's just like- Unless they're you like, live in LA. I have, even in LA, they're like, I have a job. And you're like, no, you're right, you're right. I got, got my David, finger in a lot of job. pots too. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm get high later. That's. Job. <laughs> and it's Tuesday. I mean, that's my problem. You guys understand my issue now. <laughs> uh, here's my question. I smoke weed for work and recreationally. Uh, I'm very comfortable with that. I do often find myself in places where weed isn't like necessarily welcome. What do you, what advice, but I don't want to be like quiet about the fact that I've like smoked weed. What advice do you have on me being like an ambassador for weed in maybe places where it's still like, it's okay, but it's not quite okay. Like, yeah, we're at the Olive Garden when you're here, your family and my family smokes weed. Like, <laughs> if that makes sense. Totally. I think that the, the idea of being a good ambassador for any, anything that you like, um is is to think about dosage for one is to and i'm not talking about how much weed you're going to consume but how much you decide to talk about it but i truly believe that from an etiquette standpoint it should be okay for you to talk about weed if the subject is coming up and share your positive perspective on it your consumption if you want to share it and that that shouldn't be a problem. We live in an era where it's legalized fully in many states now. This shouldn't be a taboo topic. It shouldn't be a, 
out of place topic the same way you might discuss <laughs> wine or beers that you love if, if you know I don't know, micro brews are your thing. <laughs> like it's, They're not. I think that just, just like any other interest, it should be something that you can talk about. Telling your server at Olive Garden randomly, like, you know, after you order a Sprite or something, not like maybe like just conversationally <laughs> the eat smoothest way to go. But you know, it's like pride. You can, you can wear it. You can, you can put it out there. <laughs> For the record, it's not random. It's just like, if I smoke some weed and I'm at Olive Garden, I'm like, oh, usually I would be annoyed that they are playing Nora Jones, but then I'm like, oh, I'm, I like this. That's all, it's like complimentary. It's very complimentary. Okay, there you go. You could be like, I'm high and I'm really enjoying the Nora Jones you guys have playing in the background here. I think that's Exactly. Fine. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to know. I think you should write that on their Yelp page. Uh, right? I also feel like, David, you brought up Olive Garden because, as I may have mentioned on every episode, I am Italian. Um, okay, Are you Italian? Uh, my next, <laughs> my next question uh, relates, relates to David's question. So, you know, I live in a state where it's legal. My family lives in a state where it's legal. My parents know what I do for a living. Um, everyone knows what I do for a living, including kind of my nieces who are underage okay. um okay. and they they follow me on instagram they've liked posts about this show because they're supportive and they love totally. me but i also feel kind of weird um and i've like basic basically how i explain the show ugh. I didn't really explain it very well and it kind of goes back to what uh, you said about like if i was hosting a show about wine mm -hmm. or beer I wouldn't even think twice about it because that's right. so, you know, ingrained in pop culture. But with my nieces, I, I you know, I explained to them, I said, you know, I, I host this show about a product that you can't use until you're of legal age and but but I'm really responsible and they're just kinda like, Yeah, whatever. Like they, they didn't really care. Yeah, um, they're just like, <laughs> You seem happy. But I I feel weird when they like a post of me holding joints saying, Watch the premiere of Wowie. Like yeah. How do I navigate this? Because I feel like a lot of people are probably having this issue right now where it's like, it's totally legal, but how do you present it to... <laughs> There's my post. Um, you know, it's a cute pic. Uh, yeah, exactly. And it's like, I, I want to be a responsible influence, um, but yeah. I also don't want to hide what I do. And so what is the... I, I, is this a question? I think this is a question. Do you get it's a good, no, you're getting there. Yeah, it's a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like how do I do this in a way that is responsible and, and share who I am without encouraging bad behavior? I think if they're underage and there's, it's funny how I feel like things shift with kids in our lives. Like I know a lot of parents of, of young children, like children under the age of five, and they smoke regularly. They don't even really think about it if their kid like sees them off on the corner of the yard, you know, with a little cloud around them or something, but they're not gonna smoke right next to their kid. They're not, uh, they're definitely not keeping a lot of, um, I would say edibles that resemble like enticing kid treats, you know what I mean, around the house. And they're not, a lot of them aren't um, having direct conversations about cannabis with their kids, kind of in that five and under category, or really like maybe 10 and under category. But there's, there's this like five and under where it's like the kids really don't understand what's going on yet. And so they kind of do their thing and just don't discuss it. And then when you start getting to these older ages, kids know that smoking's not good for you, you know? And that, so mm -hmm. there's this whole kind of issue of if it's smoke or vape, are you having to explain your choices? And you have to, I think, talk with their parents a little bit about that too, to make sure that you're having conversations in a responsible way with someone else's children. I think that's really important. Um, so. For instance, I, I have nieces and nephews and, um, and and I have a lot of cousins that I'm very, very close to who all have children. And some of their kids are old enough now to, A, they learn about weed in school because they live in a state where it's legalized and, and they talk about it just like they talk about alcohol and tobacco and 
things to watch out for from a health perspective. Um, but that he's he's old enough too, where you know the older ones that are like sort of 12, 13, 14, I've chosen not to hide the fact that I consume it, but I do not consume it in front of them. So kind of what you're talking about, where these girls know yeah, that it's part of your life, but you're not gonna be smoking a joint in front of them. Um, I, I do know he la he giggles a little bit whenever I m mention it, like, oh, I, I got high before I came here. I wanna eat everything. Like, you know, he's like, <laughs> you know. <Been> but <laughs> I think that it's, a, it's like an age appropriate thing, you know, how you determine to handle yourself, what kinds of conversations that you're having. And I think it's important for you, I know you, you want help setting boundaries, to say to your, your nieces, like, hey, I love that you guys are supporting me, but I'll be honest, I'm not comfortable yet with you kind of being in this part of my life. I might suggest you not like mm -hmm. my my wowie TV stuff or maybe do it through mom, you know, make mom and dad do it or mom and mom do it or dad and dad do it. Like it's do that kind of a situation so that you're still getting the family support. You could be like, hey, girls, high five me anytime, you know, the show is on. Like, you know, just right. something like send me a text <laughs> with a yay, go, go auntie. Like something you can trade out the support in a way that makes you more yeah, comfortable with how they're supporting you. Sorry, that was a long-winded answer. Guys. No, no, that, that was, was great. That was really helpful. You should also tell them to get mom and dad to like and subscribe. Uh, yes, piggyback very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to piggyback off of what Julia said. I have a little brother, and he's he's just now coming of age to where he can be smoking cannabis. And what I worry about is, you know, he sees big brother Real cool guy on TV, <laughs> fake Rolex, <laughs> cash and checks off of weed. I sort of want, I want to know how to approach the lifestyle with my brother in a way where I'm like, I don't over glamorize it. Like this is just like a thing that I use all the time in my life. I don't want you to be 21 and go crazy and get like a dab rig necklace and like, weed rules <laughs> tattoos on your knuckles like how do i kind of get him to dip his toe into the pool instead of jumping in well i think one just starting out by by finding out if he's even curious about it if it's even something he's into i've been really surprised at the number of, of people sort of as you said coming of age who are just like nah, not my thing not into it and i'm like just just wait until your 30s <laughs> you'll want something <laughs> <laughs> like, but I, I really like, like the first is to give them that respect of like being like, this isn't my thing. Don't worry about it. But I think for, for something that's as close as a sibling relationship, like really talking openly about how you were grateful that you didn't dive so far in, or maybe you wished you hadn't. And if you could tell him anything, it was, yeah, well, you know, I wish I had done this or I, I'm glad I didn't do that. You know, but I think one of the best things that anyone who's older can do is to impart their own personal journey on someone else and just say, hey, this is what it was like for me. And looking back, this is what I would wish if I could go through it again with the knowledge I had. You know, I think that's always a pretty uh, responsible place to be coming from. And I think being super realistic with young people no matter how young they're if even if you're 60 and they're 40 be super realistic with them about the about any health concerns i think that that's something that when you're when i was younger i i felt so invincible i, I just turned 39 yesterday and i'm like going i should start laying off the inhaling <laughs> like you know like <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> and so i i do think that that's a for me that's a big one is just being realistic of the impacts that any substance that someone chooses to use could have on their body um or the realities that you know like not every strain is the same that can be a little freaky sometimes like you always want to have safety call me little brother like call me if you do something and you're scared or you're worried like i think giving that kind of support is like really good for for a younger sibling coming who's coming of age awesome got it um, i'll tell him if you want a cool job smoke some weed <laughs> <laughs> um well, happy birthday, first of all. Oh, yeah. um, happy birthday. 
Uh, and also, you're not just an expert in weed etiquette, Lizzie. Uh, you're an expert in all etiquette. So do you, we're going to play a game. Uh, okay. It's called The Best Way. Okay. Um, and in this game, uh, we're going to give you, uh, we're going to give you an insane scenario and you have to tell us the best way to handle it. All right. Fingers crossed. So we're going to start with the first one. First one. So for the first one, the person that you're dealing with in this scenario is Darth Vader. So okay. you've been dating Darth Vader exclusively for nine months. He's totally a perfect nice. partner, but you've just... <laughs> Totally my type. <laughs> totally my type. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Um, so you've been dating exclusively for nine months. He's a perfect partner, but you just found out what he does for a living, and now you have to oh. break up with him. What yes, is the best way? I think you have to be. Um, well, there, this is one where I would say there's two best ways, and this is the the very rare safety supersedes etiquette. Um, like escape hatch that can happen every mm -hmm. now and again, where it's mm -hmm. almost okay to have some rude behavior going on because safety is an issue. And when your boyfriend turns out to be, you know, the not leader, but high up in an empire that is doing nasty things around <laughs> the universe, I think that, you know, you might want to pull that like Princess Leia thing of going into hiding and, and really being hidden from him. So ghosting may be very appropriate in this situation, which is very, very rare. But again, okay. safety supersedes etiquette. If I'm not going to be unsafe, if he's actually good guy that I've gotten to know over these past nine months underneath and I'm, I'm sitting there going, <laughs> I know he's not going to just, you know, <laughs> lightsaber me <laughs> on a diagonal and there I go. I think that I can be really clear with them and say, you know, Darth, I, I've really appreciated the time that we've spent getting to know each other, but this isn't going to work for me. And I hope you can understand that. It might be worth it to bring some weed to that breakup. I'm just saying, but I don't oh, think you do yeah. that breakup via text. I don't think you do it like via DM. I think you got to get on the phone, got to get a FaceTime. Hey, what do you think about FaceTime breakups? With That's Darth easy. Vader or oh. in general? In general, I just I hadn't really thought about that before. Like somehow phone seems better than FaceTime. I don't know. Agree. Big time. Yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah. Are you feeling yeah. that too? Okay. So phone. How about phone a live person? stream breakup? Yeah. I I don't know. Karen was through. <laughs> I haven't tried it. Call us on Zoom if you want to break up with someone. The hotline is open, 808-683-4791. It's Relationship Week here at Wowie. And if you want to end your relationship, we can help you do it. All right. <laughs> we'll dead it for you. Uh, I have the next one. Are you ready for the okay, next one? The next best yeah. way. Okay. The person is Ernest J. Keebler, uh, the Keebler elf for all you nerds out there. Uh, he's your boss. He's like a Jeffrey Bezos type, but he's a little taller. Uh, you have to ask for a raise. What's the best way? He's pointing a shotgun at me when I'm asking or not? This, is I, this picture has nothing to do with... Uh, okay, okay. I, I think it's some sort of fan people. art. Okay. So first of all, anytime you're going in for a raise, you got to make sure that you have been on point. So have I been frosting my cookies well? Have I been putting in <laughs> the cream filling and dipping the fudge sticks so that they're completely covered in fudge? I mean, this is like, you have to be on point when you're about to say to anybody, I want more money from you. Cause like it's, it is hard for companies to make money. Like you get at least a lot of companies, some companies, apparently it's really easy, but it's hard. And you really, I think, have to justify that that raise isn't just because you've been there for six months. You know, it's like, well, what have you done to make this company better and have it, you know, actually be able to support the raise that you're asking for? Those cookies have to be frosted. Yeah, you got to You got to really be a fudge dipper from way, way back. You do. That was good. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> I also have to say, I just want to point out something about the Keebler elves that has always bothered me. They are yeah. baking cookies. They're using fire inside of a tree. That feels like a job yeah, hazard. I don't know yeah. how they've made it work, uh, but I, there's it no is OSHA very for elves. 
I know. They'd be shut down this year for sure. I mean, like, that seems like a big risk. Yeah. Well, good luck <laughs> to the elves. Uh, if any elves want to call into the hotline on Zoom, we can give you some advice about starting a union. Uh, please call in. Okay, here's a tough one. Uh, it's Miss Piggy. You're going to deal with Miss Piggy, America's favorite pig. She's your roommate. This bitch hasn't paid rent in three months. Cause she, but, but... She's got money to buy a bunch of new shit. It keeps getting delivered every day. There's a new Amazon package. What is the best way? So a lot of this depends on whether you are in control of whether she lives in this space or not. So like if it's your apartment mm. and you've got the only name on the lease and she's just in renting a room from you, or if you're both names on the lease, that's a bigger deal. Cause if it's the if it's the former you're in a really good position to be the one setting a lot of the boundaries and if she's supposed to be paying you that rent directly like you're renting to her sort of then i think it's it's very very clear that you can say hey listen you've got to be able to get me rent and bills by x date or we have to set up a payment plan ugh, by x date in order and you've got to like actually be making payments or i've got to move you out and you're gone and like that's honestly like i get very brass tacks about this kind of stuff like you're if you're in that position and it's not working you set those really clear boundaries and if she's not meeting those deadlines i'm sorry pig but you are out and like it's whoa not happening. Okay. like he's gone because that's like you can't leave people in the lurch now if miss piggy was struggling had lost her job like was in a, having a real hard time of it that's when you really want to be as generous as you can like i said offer to set up some kind of payment plan something like that but if she's sitting there ordering you know shoes that are more expensive than the rent she's not paying and they're showing up at the house regularly and it's not rent the runway i think we have a really big problem and you got to be real clear about it yeah get that pig out of the blanket get her out of the blanket <laughs> that is so good <laughs> Steven, so quick. I'm trying my best. Uh, last one, and this, I'm going to be honest, this one's a little dark. Uh, last Ooh. one, we're talking about Cookie Monster, right? <laughs> a man trapped in the throes of addiction. Uh, you had a bag of chocolate edibles, and wow, did he just eat all of them. You tell him the dosage, but he insists he knows his limits. He seems like he's in a real dark place. You have to say something. What's the best way? Oh gosh, <laughs> the best way to handle this one. I think you definitely <laughs> like. First of all, dude, why did you eat all of my my edibles? <laughs> like those. Like, can we talk it's about boundaries around food and sharing and that sort of thing? But secondly, he got fired from his coding job. Oh, he got fired from his coding job. Oh, my goodness. I don't, I'm making that up. I'm making that up. We don't we don't know. No, that. Okay. We don't know that. So he's um, I think I think that this is one where you, you do have to set some boundaries around food and that sort of thing. And then I would caution someone that if they've consumed a lot of THC edibles, that there there can be I don't I don't, I don't know the best word to use. So bizarre consequences. And I think that it's worthwhile to try to use some CBD to counteract the effects if you can, get a lot of water mm. into his system. If he's sitting there saying, no, 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 there, I mean, I, this is where I start to not know what to do. I'm like, well, do I drag him to the ER? Probably too much, like that's probably too far. Do I stay home, make sure that he's not like slipping off into a little mini weed coma? you know, keep keep getting him a glass of water, that sort of thing. That's probably the zone I would be in for this one. It's just like, be be a good friend, be there to help him ride it out, try to get him to eat some THC and see the error of his ways. <laughs> no, I. that's great. We're gonna get through it together. You know what I mean? We're gonna get through Wait, it I'm together. Sorry. Monster. He would eat some THC? Wait, what do you mean? Didn't he did eat some? Did you say he should? He should eat some CBD. Did you say? She CBD. said he should okay, eat some CBD. Okay, I thought you CBD. said he should eat. Oh, I thought she said eat more THC, and I was like, 
No, oh, I, maybe I misspoke. I definitely yeah, meant. The show. I definitely meant eat some CBD, <laughs> not THC. Sorry. <laughs> and that well, will maybe we try. Should help. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean, we try the I, THC I thing though. <laughs> Fight fire Just with fire, you know. High. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, you thank know, you so I mean, much. these Muppets, their metabolism, their, their, you know, metabolic rate is, is different from, from our human metabolic rate. <laughs> oh, yeah, their pancreases are made out of felt. It's a whole other science behind I mean, behind they got a whole it. hand, uh, like, it's, geez, yeah, we, yeah. poor guys. Who's feeding that hand inside of him? That's, you know what I mean? Who's watching The Watchmen? Uh, <laughs> Lizzie, thank you so much for coming back on and helping us with our Muppet problems, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> and my my bad Darth Vader, you know, boyfriend problems. No, that felt that felt real. That felt like it came from a real place. Uh, Past lives, do you, you know. have any? Do you have anything you want to plug? Anything for our viewers to go check out before you get out of here? Oh, definitely. Please come visit us on emilypost.com if you have any more questions about etiquette, weed related or otherwise. And you can find us on all the fun social media, Instagram. We are um, at higher etiquette, at higher underscore etiquette specifically for the book and at the Emily Post or at Emily Post Institute for uh, the Emily Post Institute. And um, just be be safe out there, everybody. <laughs> Oh, thanks so much for coming back on, Lizzie. <laughs> Thank you all. This was a blast. Take care. <laughs> Stay high. <laughs>